I am one of the Future 50 scholars. I'm just going into my second year of my PhD with Ross. He's my supervisor and I'm in the School of Museum Studies. So the work that I do is around digital accessibility. So the PhD project, which I'll show you on the next one, kind of combines a lot of my sort of specialties and things that I've done. So prior to beginning this PhD, I was a technical specialist for Apple. So I worked for them for five years. And then I was also what's called creative, delivering workshops to the public to use Apple technology creatively and to also use it for accessibility. So that kind of started a spark that I uh, follow now to facilitate digital accessibility for neurodivergent individuals. And I'm also a professional educator. I spent two years in South Korea doing teaching at a private international academy in Seoul. Uh, so I taught art, social sciences, and I brought in my previous education in archaeology and anthropology into that and did workshops with these children, teaching them archaeological methods. And then I'm also a content creator too. So I take videos and pictures and try to create interesting emotional narratives through Reels, Instagram, TikTok, that kind of stuff as well. So this is a bit about my project here. So this, this is the long title of it. So enhancing accessibility and inclusivity for autistic individuals in museum, digital culture, and extended reality experiences. So that encompasses digital technologies inside of museums or um, art institutes, and then also things like VR and AR. So right now I am focusing particularly on enjoyment for autistic individuals and how we can kind of come up with uh, a baseline design that isn't so technical, but is more um, sort of design focused in terms of um, what we call, what some people call interactive cultural heritage elements. So this is something that I have an idea about that if we include a certain level of these so-called in, uh, interactive cultural heritage elements, that we can create a better experience for everybody, but also for autistic individuals. A big part of my research also is that I'm collaborating with the autistic community pretty much from the beginning until the end. So a lot of work that involves autistic individuals typically does not actually bring autistic individuals into the research process. They are just the subjects. So in this, I've developed my ideas for how my fieldwork is going to go and for the questions I'm going to ask. And I am going to send all of that to a focus group. I've got already close to 20 people who have volunteered to provide their lived experience and expertise in shaping my research. So it's already gone to ethics, but it will most likely need to be resubmitted a couple of times as I make changes based on the feedback that I get of how the project is going to be conducted. So you see, I have ethnographic flexible research methods. So this is a project that is going to adjust to the needs and wants of the audience as they participate in helping me develop how it's going to go so that the final participants who are going to actually, the actual field work is going into museums on a field trip with me, a one-on-one -on -one experience and testing out the digital experiences there. And then also MBD, they have provided software and hardware to us to test out uh, virtual reality experiences. They're all culture based and some of them are ones that uh, we've partnered with them on to make. And we're also going to be testing that with an autistic audience as well. Kind of a, a very multifaceted approach to ideally just understanding the effect that this has emotionally and uh, in, on enjoyment on autistic individuals. And the end outcome hopefully will be some design guidelines and then I will be administering training myself to the partnering organizations on how to implement these sort of basic principles and guidelines and things that I develop from the research and data analysis at the end. So this is my project, quick live there.